And you're like, yeah, okay, I get it. I'm supposed to pick up the pieces, but what if I'm not strong enough to pick up the pieces? Hey, it's HJ, and I wanted to talk to you guys about something that you have probably seen circling the internet. First off, I want to start by saying Fresh Prince of Bel-Air was literally my daily routine when I was younger. And so I wanted to talk about what is floating around the internet. You may have seen it, the fault versus responsibility, which I thought was spot on and amazing. And I loved everything that he had to say. I just wanted to add to it and elaborate on it, maybe from a Christian perspective. If you have not seen the video, then here, I'll give you a little clip so you can know what I'm talking about. Uh, having a debate with a friend of mine and we got stuck on the difference between fault and responsibility. And she kept talking about how something was somebody's fault, it's somebody's fault. And I was like, it really, it don't matter whose fault it is that something is broken, if it's your responsibility to fix it. Coming from somebody who has had trauma in my life, I know there's people who have had way more trauma, but I've had my good little fair share. I've been on my own since I was 16 in this world. I grew up, you know, in a single parent home, all that type of stuff, so I know the world can be rough and tough, guys. And I love that he talked about a lot of things aren't your fault. And he used the example, you know, a father who is addicted to alcohol and who hurts his family, that's not your fault. Not somebody's fault if their father was an abusive alcoholic. Or their responsibility to figure out how they're gonna deal with those traumas and try to make a life out of it. And he says, maybe a spouse that cheats on you and leads you, that's not your fault. It's not your fault if your partner cheated and ruined your marriage, but it is your responsibility to figure out how to take that pain, overcome that, and build a happy life. So I thought that everything he had to say was spot on, but I was left wanting a little bit. I felt like there was something missing, and the difference between a non-believer and somebody who has Christ is that He's talking about taking responsibility, but then he's talking about just pulling yourself up by the bootstraps and getting through it. Your heart, your life, your happiness is your responsibility and your responsibility alone. Whereas somebody who has Christ in their life is promised the spirit of God to help them get through things. While it is our responsibility, it's not our own strength that we have to do it on. And you're like, yeah, okay, I get it. I'm supposed to pick up the pieces, but what if I'm not strong enough to pick up the pieces? And that's where the beauty of Christ comes in. You know, scripture says that all who are weary, all who are heavy laden, like, come, I will take your burdens. I will give you rest. It doesn't say, figure it out on your own and it's your responsibility to have a good life. Go for it. Jesus says, come place it on my shoulders. Your shoulders were not made to handle the weight of all the sin that will happen to you. That is not your fault in your life. But Christ says, not only does he like, of course, forgive you of your own sin, but he gives you your strength, the strength of the Holy Spirit, not of your own fleshly strength that can only go so far, but he gives you the strength of God to continue with your life and to be able to choose joy and not live with anger and not live with fear and not live with pain. And whenever we keep those things bottled up inside, we hurt other people. Like you've heard the words hurt people, hurt people. Yeah, okay, how do I stop being a hurt person? I get it, I, I have to stop, but I don't know, it's too hard. Jesus is your strength. And it's not just like, you're saying, okay, I'm gonna choose joy. I choose joy. Oh my gosh, I feel so full of joy. Joy is riveting through my veins and every fingertip is spewing out joy. That's not the way it works. We say we choose joy on the basis of knowing who God is, what he's promised for us currently and what he's promised for us eternally. And that helps to give us a biblical perspective and not to sit and wallow in our sorrow, but we get to see beyond the hurt and beyond the trauma and we get to see what God has promised us, not only in his spirit helping us now, but eternity in heaven with him, with no fear, no pain, all joy, all peace, all love, no sin whatsoever. And so that helps us to have joy. We can base our joy on him because we know him, but if you're not in fellowship with him and you're not learning more about the attributes and the character of who God is, and he's not increasingly becoming more and more beautiful and big to you, 
it's gonna be hard to just choose joy because you're not choosing it on the basis of who God is. You're just saying some words and probably nothing's gonna happen. So I just wanna encourage you to wrap it up. Trauma may not be your fault, but it is your responsibility, like Will Smith was saying, to take it to another next level. It's your responsibility to choose to walk in a way that is worthy of the gospel you've been called to, to be holy as God is holy. He wants you to be holy, so why wouldn't he give you the strength to choose holiness, you know what I mean? So I love you guys, you're amazing. I hope that this video helped you. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment below, I'd love to have conversation. Please share, I love you guys, so. Love you guys, bye.